So we're talking about n-linear functions, also called multilinear function of an n by n matrix. Let's say that A is a matrix defined over a commutative ring K. For the sake of simplicity, we can say that this um, ring is just the field of real numbers. Um, so it's an n by n matrix defined over a commutative ring K. Then A would look like so. So that we have the first row, which is uh, which starts with A11, A12, and so on till A1n. And then the second row is A21, A22, so on, until we get to the final row, that um, with the last element of the matrix being ANN. So it's a square matrix. So I just want you to keep in mind uh, that this is a generic representation of an N by N matrix that I'll be using. In this, we can also say that um, each row of A would be denoted by letter alpha, so that alpha 1 is the first row, alpha 2 second row, and so on till alpha n. Um, then a function d of A, which is a multilinear function of A, could also be described as a function of all of these rows, as d of alpha 1, alpha 2, and so on until alpha n. n-linear means that if uh, we take um, any uh, ith row, alpha i, and uh, we make um, the function a linear combination of this ith row, while we keep all the remaining rows fixed, then d uh, of a can be represented as a linear combination, as um, described here, where c is a scalar multiple. So we multiply the ith row with c, um, and then we add another row to this i row, which we will denote by alpha i prime. Um, and keeping in mind that the remaining rows are fixed, then d can be split into two parts, like so. So I would say that at, at, at a first look that this uh, uh, definition might look a bit confusing. Uh, so I think it uh, might help to explain this uh, with the help of an example. Um, so from the same book, uh, Hoffman and Kunz, uh, there, is, there is a problem uh, at the end of the section from which I've picked up uh, two examples. So in the first example, um, both of which are applied to 3 by 3 matrices A, um, D of A is simply the sum of um, the diagonals. So that is also the trace function. So that will be the first example we'll explore and find out whether that uh, function d of a is n-linear or three-linear or not. And in the second example, d is simply the product of a11, a22, and a33. And we'll find out whether this other function is um, n-linear or three-linear or not. So if we take A as a generic 3x3 three three matrix, um, as shown here, and uh, then the function D of A becomes a sum of the diagonal terms, A11 plus A22 plus A33. So that would be the first example. To look at this in further detail, I'll use a numerical example. I'm going to create a simple matrix A. Um, the, each row of it is uh, just one number repeated, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha, alpha 3. And um, we can also say that uh, the second row of A can be represented as a combination of uh, two rows, uh, one of which is simply 2, 2, 2, which uh, will be alpha 2, added to which is alpha 2 prime, which is uh, 4, 5, 6. So that now the matrix A looks like um, First row 1, 1, 1, second row being 6, 7, 8, and the third row again being 3, 3, 3. In other words, the second row is a linear combination of alpha 2, which is 2, 2, 2, and alpha 2 prime, which is 4, 5, 6. The definition of n-linearity simply implies that the function d when applied to the whole 
matrix which is the sum of the second row while the first and third rows are kept fixed should be equal to the sum of the function applied separately to each of the component matrices. And here I would just like to re-emphasize one point that um, the, the matrix on the left side of the equation is not actually literally the sum of both matrices in the traditional sense in that the first row is not the sum of the first rows. You can see that the first row of the final matrix is 1, 1, 1, and the component matrices both have 1, 1, 1 in the first row. So if you were to sum, sum them up, you would get a 2, 2, 2. But n linearity means that the rows, all rows except for 1, have to be fixed. So we are not going to sum up the first and the third row in the matrix on the left side, but only the second row. I'm going to simply check whether the trace um, of the uh, matrix on the left side um, equals a trace on the right side and if it does then uh, this function which is the trace is an n linear function so on the left side we sum up the diagonals and we get um, 11 whereas on the right side we uh, obtain the trace of each component matrix uh, so for the first matrix we get 6 add to that we have 9 and the sum is 15, which is not the same on both sides. Therefore, the trace is not an n linear function. In the second example, the U of A is uh, the product of the um, diagonals. So A11 times A22 times A33. In this simple example, I'll show quickly that this indeed is a an, um, three linear and linear function. So on the left side, as usual, we have a matrix, uh, the second row of which can be split into two rows. And uh, the um, product of the diagonal elements on both sides uh, will match in this example. So on the left side, the product is 5 times 3 times 1 equals 15. On the right side, uh, when D is applied to the first matrix, um, it is 3 times 2 times 1, 6, add to which 3 times 3 times 1 equals 9, and the sum again is 15. So 15 on both sides is the same, therefore uh, the function d of a is a three linear function. Okay, that was all about n linearity in this video. I think that the book uh, Hoffman and Kunz has uh, given it slightly difficult for a first time reader, and I hope that the examples I gave um, was somewhat helpful. Thank you very much for watching.